Hey, what's your name? This is James Connell. I think we've seen you uh, yesterday. Uh, I can't tell you. Uh, I'm a professor of history at Columbia College in South Carolina. And I'll ask my colleague to introduce himself. Well, I'm still in the very first. Uh, what you don't know is former prosecutors, business attorneys, retired from the Google News in the Washington County, Wisconsin, in 2006. Colonies asserted in 
James Rose stated that, quote, every British subject born on the continent of America is entitled to all the natural, essential, inherent, and inseparable rights of our fellow subjects to Great Britain, end quote. As a result of the imperfections with the British government, many political philosophers, such as John Locke, sought to promote forms of government that were based on new and revolutionary principles. John Locke inspired many phrases containing the Declaration of Independence, including the famous quote, all men are created equal. Unlike the rights of Englishmen under the British law, the Declaration of Independence famously declared that America would be hereby partial of self-evident truths and unalienable rights. This is an important foundation of Maine's death. Uh, there's enormous amount of information you've thrown out, so let's begin to uh, take some of that part and, uh, and see where we go with it. Uh, you mentioned the uh, Glorious Revolution. Uh, that came about in part because Parliament had become a dictatorship. Uh, was there any concern um, kind of, kind of about this? Uh, he believed, and many royalists believed, that the best guarantee of freedom was a strong king uh, who was committed to the law. Were they right? Was that a, was that a legitimate fear that the colonists should have taken account of? So getting rid of the king, the king guarantees their rights. Is that a good idea? Well, when the parliament gained power and the king became weaker, the colonists were infected because of the way parliament had acted against them. The, the colonists were given specific rights of rights of Englishmen, which were violated by the parliament. So why did they not protest against parliament rather than king? I believe they saw the king as um, a feature of the like, British, British government, and they wanted to put the blame on the king because of the way the system is set up. It's supposed to be monarchy, but powerful king. So when they were writing the Declaration of Independence, they wrote he, and then they explained what the king had done wrong. And the king had given his power to Parliament through documents such as the Magna Carta and the Petition of Rights. Very, very good. Thank you. I believe I heard the uh, phrase 150 years of solitary neglect. I believe it was solitary. Excuse me. Thank you. Um, was that accurate, uh, especially given the support that England had provided during the French and Indian Wars? I believe that they were in a state of solitary neglect because of the way that they were represented. Most colonists went off of their state constitutions and they had and they had their own forms of government as early as the main co follow contact before they even reached the um, you know, in the states. So they were going off their own forms of government because they weren't given they weren't given great representation. For um, I do believe that it was a bunch of years of time to carry neglect because um, they had the time to craft and get like a good foundation of their own government, so they started crafting uh, their own state constitutions. And um, there was many like economic opportunities for the people to grant for money because there was so much more open land that it was so easy to get land and get jobs for them. So like, and there was no help from Parliament to get those jobs for the British constitution, British nation. So. They, could, they did it all through themselves, which is strong and common. I agree with my colleague, but the state constitutions were based off of colonial charters, which were granted to the colonists by the king. So although they were in a state of nature, there were certain aspects of their government that were still coming from the British constitution. Throughout the period of slightly neglect, the colonies were also able to establish Massachusetts body of liberties. And this was also established by the people and ratified by the people, so they knew exactly what rights they were getting. The Massachusetts Five Liberties was actually more advanced than the English Bill of Rights in the British Constitution. In 1641, the Massachusetts Five Liberties was also starting to establish the unusual punishment in eminent domain, whereas in the English Bill of Rights that was established until 1689. Thanks. Why did the colonists attach special importance to written guarantees of basic rights and methods of government? The colonists felt that they needed to have a written government because having the government in the laws written down made it higher law. They also had different ways of requiring this to be higher law. They had uh, many state constitutions and our national constitution today have forms of higher law, such as amendment processes, where they need a full process to change the constitutions, which was created a form of higher law. Having the law written down and having their rights ensured in the government makes it harder for the government to violate their laws, which is also a form of higher law. Going off what my colleague said, um, example of when violence was when Britain like was coming in and they were changing their um, laws very easily, like, like the Sugar Act and the Stamp Act, they kept changing their law because there was no interpretation of it, so it was so easy to change it 
well, if you write it down, it's very hard to change the interpretation of the Constitution. Also, oh. in the British Constitution, the English Bill of Rights say that there can be no quarter of soldiers. In the colonies, Parliament plays troops that can be quartered in the colonies' houses. And although the, because the Constitution is not higher law, it was violated, but in our Constitution today, it is specifically saying that there can be no quarter of soldiers. You mentioned the Magna Carta a couple times. What exactly does it say? What is the significance of that uh, very ancient document? Well, the Magna Carta basically stated that uh, the king could not act above the law. Um, it created the idea of having an executive that was subject to um, limits and checks and balances in other branches. So it basically said that the quality could also check the executive. So part of the Magna Carta was tried by jury, and part of the reason that the colonies wrote that version of defense was because trial of jury was violated because of the admiralty court that was established where they had trials on ships. Were land ownership issues as important in the United States as they had in the colonies as they had been? <coughs> land ownership issues weren't as important because uh, you did need land to vote, but many people, it was a lot easier to get land in this, in this part of the representation because 70% of white males in the United States could vote. Well, very few of uh, those 10% could vote in England. Also, knowing what people thought said, it was very easy to get land in um, the new nation. Um, the Britain nation, like they had, to, all the land would go to the um, oldest son, so it was very hard to get land, so it was very hard to vote. Thank you.